This is section 3.2, which is exponential and logistic modeling. We're going to talk about constant percentage rate and exponential functions, exponential growth and decay models, using regression to model population, and then other logistic models. Okay. So exponential population model, so if a population P is changing at a constant percentage rate, R, then we can use P of T equals P sub zero, which is the initial population, times one plus the rate, which is expressed as a decimal, and T is our time in years. So for our first example, it says tell whether the population model P of T equals 786,543 times 1.021 raised to the t is an exponential growth or exponential decay and find the constant percent rate of growth. So it kind of already tells us what the answer is, but um, this would be growth because our b value is 1.021, which is greater than 1. So if your B value, your rate, is greater than 1, it's going to be growth. If it's less than 1, it's going to be decay. So our rate, we have to think about that B value is 1 plus R. So this would be 1 plus 0 0.021. So that means our rate is right here, written as a decimal. So that would be a 2.1% growth rate. Okay, example two, we're going to find an exponential function. To, so determine the exponential function with an initial value of 10 and increasing at a rate of 5% per year. So we would say P of T equals 10 times 1 plus, then I write the percentage as a decimal, so 0 0.05 raised to the T, and then... Oftentimes, you're going to see it simplified, so this would be 10 times 1.05 raised to the t. So either of those are technically correct, but um, you're going to see it more often simplified than not. Okay, example three says modeling bacteria growth. Suppose a culture of 200 bacteria is put into a petri dish and the culture doubles every hour. Predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. So this would be, if we write our equation here, it'd be P of T equals, we're starting out with 200, we're doubling every hour, so 2 to the T, and we're going to say T is hours. Okay, so what we want to know is we don't want to actually plug in how many hours we want to plug in the number of bacteria so we're looking for when does 350,000 equal 200 times 2 to the t now this is always interesting to me because you've already learned about exponential and logarithmic functions in your previous classes in algebra 2 so um when we teach this and introduce introduce this in pre-calc or math analysis, it's, um, it's interesting because we have the skills to solve this algebraically. However, we haven't learned about logs in this class yet. So the recommendation for solving this right now until we get into those log problems is to use a graph. So again, if you remember how to solve this with a, using logs, go for it. But it's okay right now to just graph it. So you'd graph y equals 350,000 and then you'd graph y equals 200 times 2 to the t, and you would find the intersection point, so you're going to have an exponential and um, a horizontal line. You're finding where they intersect, the x value where they intersect. Um, if you're using Desmos, make sure you zoom out, because remember, 350,000 is a really big number, so you're not going to see it necessarily um, in just the main screen. So you'd want to zoom out or change your window. Okay, so when you do that, you get that t equals 10.77, or if we're writing this in terms of hours, we would say 10 hours and 46 minutes. So that's, again, that's that t value right there where they intersect. Okay, 
So the next thing is modeling using exponential regression. So we did this in the modeling project, but um, I want to give step-by-step -step instructions so you know how to do this. So the easiest way is going to be to use Desmos. So you're going to, it says to use the population data in the table to predict the population for the year 2000. Compare with the actual 2000 population um, of approximately 281 million. So I did not copy this part of the um, problem, but it says to use t equals zero for the year 1890, and then to use t equals one for the year 1900, and so on. So um, each t value is going to represent 10 years, okay? So then, so what I did is I got this set up in our Desmos app, so you didn't have to watch me input all the numbers. So just to go back though to show you what I did, um, I went to Desmos and I typed the word table and then it, it puts in a table for me. So you can see this one's x2, y2. I don't want that one but I just wanted to show you how I got the table. So I typed the word table and then you can see I in my x's I went 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 because we're saying t equals 0 is 1890 and t equals 1 is 1900. And then my y values are just the same y values in my table. Okay, so now to get an exponential regression, we're going to type in y1. And then you're going to use not the equal sign, but the little approximately equal to. And then we're going to use a times b raised to... to do it on the there we go nope. <laughs> that's why I had it all ready okay so then you're gonna put x1 up as the exponent so you can see the second I did that I have parameters so it tells me that a is equal to um, 68.72 and that B is 1.14 um, so then the other thing that I just want to bring to your attention is you can hit the little wrench up in the upper right hand corner and you might want to change your window. So my x's I'm going to go from let's do negative 2 to 15 and my y's I'm going to stick with negative 5 but then my y's go up to 226 so I'm going to just say like 400. Okay, so then you can see by doing this now I can see that line that fits my data. So that's my exponential regression um, and that's the data. So I can write the equation y equals 68.7 times 1.14 raised to the t or to the x and then that's going to help us predict the population in the year 2000. So let me write this down here. So we've got 68.7 and 1.14. So then if I go back to my slide here, nope, <laughs> I would do, so this is f of x equals 68.7 times 1.14 four to the x. So then if I type this into my calculator, I want to find f of 11 because that would represent the year 2000. So 68.7 times 1.14 raised to the 11th power gives me 290. Point three, and so that would be 290 million and it says to compare to the population that's 281 million so you can see um, this approximation was greater than what the actual amount was but that's how we can use the exponential regression to solve problems okay 
So the last thing is maximum sustainable population. So exponential growth is unrestricted, but population growth is often not. So again, when we did the modeling project and we were talking about adding new Starbucks stores, um, we, we talked about how exponential might not be the best model because we know eventually we can't keep adding stores forever at an exponential growth. So we know eventually it will level off. So logistic models are better at showing that something's going to increase fast exponentially at first, but then it's going to level off. It's going to have a maximum sustainable population. So our exam last example is modeling a rumor. So a high school has 1,500 students. Five students start a rumor, which spreads logistically. So here's our equation. This is our logistic growth model that models the number of students who have heard the rumor by the end of T days, where T equals zero is the rumor, is the day the rumor begins to spread. So we're going to answer two questions. First question is how many students have heard the rumor by the end of day zero? So what that means is we're going to find S of zero. So you're going to plug in zero for T, and then you're going to evaluate that in your calculator. So 1500 divided by 1 plus 29 E to the negative 0.9 times zero, and you should get 50 students. So that means that 50 students have heard the rumor by the end of the first day, or day zero, the day that the rumor starts to spread. Okay, the second problem we're answering is how long does it take for a thousand students to hear the rumor? So again, we're going to say 1000 equals 1500 over 1 plus 29 e to the negative 0.9 t. So again, we have not talked about logs yet. So you could solve this using logs or you could graph the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side of the equation and figure out where they intersect. So at this point in this, in all of these lessons, that would be my expectation that you would graph and find the intersection point. We will be talking about logs in these next couple sections though. Okay, so you should from the graph get that T is approximately 4.5 days. So that means that it takes about four and a half days for a thousand students to hear the rumor. And we know that eventually it's going to level off because you only have 1,500 students at the school. And so as you get closer and closer to everybody knowing, um, there's not going to be any new growth at that point. So that's why logistic is a little bit different then. So it starts off, but then it levels off. Okay, let me know if there's any questions.